These thoughts up in my head. Things I never did. I took some L's, but I'm still here. I got these thoughts up in my head. I toss and turn about some things I never said. I got regrets about some things I never did. I took some risks and took some L's, but I'm still here. I'm still here. And I know. And I know. And I know. Yo, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Overthinking Thoughts Pod. I'm your host, Ed, and as always, journey with me as we pursue greatness in a world full of chaos. Back again, episode 73. Um, we're here. <laughs> I had to take a little bit of time to get myself together. Um, been doing some soul searching. I just trying to get myself aligned right with what my spirit needs and what my mind needs and not so much of what I think I need or what I desire, you know what I mean? So I had to step back a little bit and just kind of give myself a break from recording, but I'm back now and I'm ready, you know? So it's amazing to think that we started this with episode one. We're at 73 now on the road to that magic number that I really want. I'm just going to keep doing my best to go through it and do my best to give you great info and, and try to help you throughout your life without being so anxious about things. And, you know, we don't need to worry about stuff, even though we do. But that's why we have this podcast to kind of walk through that. So if you're new here, just know that we try to pursue greatness in a world full of chaos. Anything that keeps us anxious, anything that tries to keep us depressed, anything that makes us worry, we try to find ways through just life to overcome those things, to break through those things and to be the better version of who we are rather than hold on to the thing that we don't need. If you are a returner, I appreciate the support as always. And thank you for just supporting the Overthinking Thoughts pod. Um, praying that you get something out of it. Shout out to all the new followers over on TikTok. Y'all been blowing me up over there. So thank you so much for that. For those that like and favorite the videos and save them and repost them, like that's major for me. I, I'm very thankful for that. Um, speaking of which, if you want to follow me on socials, well, let's back up housekeeping rules. It's been a while since I've done this, but housekeeping rules. So obviously, you know, if you love what we do and you're trying to pursue greatness in the world full of chaos and you want to see all these things, know that I am on YouTube at the overthinking thoughts pod where I stream all my episodes. So you'll see everything I do recording. If you want to see this face and kind of see how my hands move and all that good stuff, YouTube is where it's at. Overthinking thoughts pod, peep the logo designed by my brother and great friend ivy the great um so we have that and then if you just want to stream we're over on apple Podcasts, we're on google Podcasts, we're on spotify and i'm sure there's a couple other streaming services but those are the main three you can find those at overthinking thoughts pod as well and for the socials if you want to hit me up i'm over on instagram at overthinking thoughts pod and i'm also on tiktok at overthinking thoughts pod your support likes and comments are greatly appreciated all right so this episode as you see by the title is called out with the old what i thought about doing was around this time most people are decluttering or spring cleaning and trying to get some things together and we do that with our houses our offices our cars you know that that attic space that we need to clean that garage that we waited all the way to spring to, to clean out and we try to you know get rid of some things and salvage some stuff that we may need but for the most part a lot of purging right and i thought to myself as just human beings on this earth as we walk through things do we do a spring cleaning of ourselves do we take inventory of the things that we need to fix and do we take inventory of the things that we don't need anymore and i think one of the the crisis that we have in this earth is that a lot of us are holding on to things that we don't need. We're still carrying excess baggage. We're still carrying hurt. We're still carrying anger. We're still carrying resentment. We're still carrying pride. And some of those things we don't need and the problem, well, really all those things we don't need. But the problem is, is either A, we're holding on to them with the hope that revenge comes or B, we don't know how to let go. I think a lot of that causes anxiety and worry and stress. When you're holding on to something that you don't need, it causes unnecessary stress. When you are trying to figure out things in your own power and trying to figure out, well, what can I do and how can I move and how can I do this and I do that? I think what ends up happening is, is that you start putting yourself in a downward spiral and you're trying to control things that were never meant for you to control in the first place. And so it's important to sit back and take inventory of your life and figure out well, what is it that I don't need? One of the 
I saw this clip from um, the More Purpose pod, and one of the the hosts was talking about the mindset of what you have to be in of where you're trying to go. So he's like, if I'm trying to be an athlete, I have to have the mindset and the discipline of an athlete. I have to train like an athlete. I have to walk like an athlete. I have to make moves like an athlete, right? And then he's like, if I say that I'm a child of God, then I have to believe everything that God says. I have to believe that I'm beautifully and wonderfully made. I have to believe that he died on the cross for my sins. I have to believe those things. And so it's like, if you are wanting to be the better version of you, you have to start talking about that and believing in who you are as a person. Find your source of what strengthens you. For me, it's Jesus Christ. Find the resources of what strengthens you. For me, it's the Bible, words of affirmation, inspiration from other, you know, spiritual podcasts or people who are using their, their platform to speak good into the world. You have to be able to recognize those things. But if you can't find those things, then it could be a sign that maybe a lot of stuff that you have in your life is clutter that you need to clean. And a lot of us are. How do I want to say this? A lot of us are life hoarders. We hold on to things that we don't need thinking that we can control the outcome of what happens. The sad part is, is that we're holding on to things that have already happened. So the outcome has already come. But we feel like if we hold on to it and we just, in our mind, try to control it, it can change. And it hasn't. And maybe we're not happy with the results that came out of it. Or maybe we have some anger, whether it's the situation or it's toward a person or whatever the case may be. And if we're in that position, how do you expect to fully move forward if you're still holding on to the things in your past? How do you expect to embrace what God has for you if the whole time you're trying to open your hands to him, you're still holding on to all the stuff that he's been begging you to let go? Let it go. And yeah, you you got to do some spring cleaning of your life, man. And I think one of the things that I had to do for myself was I said, you know, I wanted to get back in the word and I put it out there and, and people were giving me these ideas of like, oh, try this, try this, try that. And as that was coming in, I was like, oh, this is great. This is great. But at the same time, I was doubting myself like, yeah, but I'm probably going to do this. or I'm probably going to do that. And I was already talking myself out of something that was going to enhance my understanding, build my relationship. And I thought to myself, why am I spending so much time being negative on things that I don't need? Like, why am I spending so much time sitting up here saying all the stuff I'm not going to do? And I think it's because that's what I used to do. You know, if you're not careful, you'll backslide into the things that you used to do and you'll disguise it as comfort. Really what it is is conflict. And you're trying to justify all these things, knowing that you need to move forward, but you're sitting there going, no, no, this is fine where I'm at because this is what I'm used to. This is just how it is. or This is just my life. It doesn't have to be that way. Just because something was the way that it was doesn't mean that it can't change. And the crazy part is, whether you believe it or not, you're the change maker. You're actually the person that can make it change. But if you don't take that step forward, then you'll always be in comfort or conflict. And I just don't think that's a life that we need to live. So I, I think that taking the time to really sit with ourselves and analyze what it is that we need to do in order to get better, I think that's key. Um, I mean, take it from take it from an athlete's perspective. You know, I'll use my son as an example. I tell him all the time he's got to be strong with the ball and he's got to work on his passes. Now, in the moment when I'm telling him this, it comes off in two different ways. There's the concern of, I don't want you to do this because I want you to get better. But then there's the coach's anger of, I know you could do better and you're just not doing it. And then my question is why? And so I think even he sometimes has to dig deep and he's looking and going, why am I doing that? Like, what am I thinking? Like, if the situation gets too crazy, do I just kind of back away from it or am I going to embrace it? When he actually embraces it, he turns out to be one of the greatest players we have on the floor. And I have to keep reminding him of who he is. And some of you have lost sight of who you are because you're still trying to identify with the old version of yourself. And it's okay to change. It's okay to improve. It's okay to enhance who you are as a person. Why are you still holding on to the old version of you, the the 
the drunk version of you, the lustful version of you, the 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 anxious version of you, the downcast version of you, the version of you that you look back at and say, I don't like that. I want to change. Why are you still holding on to that? Have you not found hope in your life? Have you not found purpose in your life? I, if you have, I could tell you who to go to. All I'm going to do is tell you to close your eyes or look up and just say, Lord, help me. Right. That's what I can help you with. But if you still want to hold on to all those things that brought you down, then you really don't want to grow. And maybe you're afraid of growth. Maybe you're afraid of change. Maybe you're afraid of what you can't become. Why would you limit yourself? Why would you hold on to all that old stuff when you could be made new, when you could be a better creation of who you are? Your history does not dictate your future. So just because you were something back then doesn't mean that you can't enhance and be better than who you are now. And if people are still wanting to judge you off the old you and you've made changes, then leave them in the back with the same stuff that you don't need and move forward into the better version of who you are supposed to be. Get rid of that old stuff. You don't have to go back to that. Okay. A case in point, um, there is a, a TikToker. I think her name is Rachel Elizabeth or something like that. She goofy. She make a lot of funny videos. Um, she jokes about herself. She will just be a just a silly person. And at the same time, will tell you about her fight with sobriety. And I believe that she is six years sober. And so it's funny because people didn't comment on their stuff and they're like, well, you're just faking it. and You're not really, um, you're not, you're not really sober. You're just saying that. And you're, you're basically being a false hope to other people. And she'll tell you her story and she'll be honest with you about what she's done. And it's like, you got all these people in the comments that want her to be her old self. And she can't because that old is dead and gone. She's moved on. She's moved forward. And we should celebrate that. You should respect the rehab of those who have decided that they don't want to be the older version of themselves and they actually want to enhance and get better. You should respect that. Why we want to hold people back and say, no, nah, you did this before. That's always you. That, that's kind of a problem because I thought that in this world, we're all trying to get better. Not the selfish way that the world wants you to get better by hurting others or stepping on people or you know, finding shortcuts and stuff like that. I ain't talking about that. I'm talking about being made new in God's image. That like that's what I'm talking about. If if God can have the the thief on the cross who has had this crazy life and is right there next to to God on the cross and is saying, Lord, remember me. And God tells him that he's going to join him in paradise. Don't you think he'll do the same for you? Are you holding on to it? Like, are you just holding on to something you know you need to let go? Are you still trying to carry things around that you can't control? Like, I, I was guilty of that. It took a long time to let go of things because I was like, well, maybe if I just continue to feel bad about myself, then, then that and everybody else will be fine. And the reality is don't nobody else care. I had to care about me. I wasn't taking care of me. I was I was putting myself in the dark. That's not fair. That's not fair. I, I have to grow. Because if I don't grow, then my kids don't grow. And if my kids don't grow, if they have kids, then they don't grow. So I, I have to accept things that I made mistakes on. I have to tell my, my children how I failed and why I don't want them to fail. I have to tell them that I've made mistakes. I have to tell them I made bad decisions because if I don't, then I'm not fully giving them the full life because I know not everything is going to be perfect and you know not everything is going to be perfect. But that doesn't mean that you have to fall back to the old version of you and how you handled those old situations. You can have a change of heart, a change of mind, a change of spirit, but you also have to be willing to look at yourself and honestly ask, am I making the right changes? Am I still holding on to things I don't need? And if I am, what can I do to get better? And I, I think like that's what I've learned is that it's a very tough thing to do because we have to hold ourselves accountable and we also have to take the steps necessary to change. And that can be highly difficult, um, especially when you're not sure of the path that you're on or where you're headed.
it could be a very scary thing. Um, and I've been there. Sometimes I still find myself there. Like if I'm wanting, like getting back in the word, but then ignoring it, that that's scary to me because then it's funny because like for me, I can't speak for everybody else, but this is just for me. I could be sitting there going, I don't know if I really want to read all this stuff. Maybe I'll read like something small when I know that I need to read at least a chapter or two, like something more than what I used to do. Cause I used to just be like verse of the day. Oh, that's great. And then nothing else. And that's not cool. And then all of a sudden, here I am sitting, doom scrolling on TikTok or something, and then here come all these videos about, you know, <laughs> where where you end up when it's all said and done, and people who talk about how their life was saved and how they changed. And then, if you're not careful, you start comparing yourself to them, and you start putting yourself in these these awful positions of, oh, I'm never going to be this or I'm never going to be that. No, man, like, take your time to analyze where you are, run your race. Like, God will set the pace for you. God will create the path for you god will give you everything that you need in order for you to be successful on that path the question is are you willing to turn from the old and walk toward the new um that's a that's a serious thing that you have to figure out you also have to analyze what is the old stuff that you need to get rid of too um holding on to old things can create old habits and if you continue to live in old habits You'll never see the newness of who you are. And one thing that you definitely don't want to do is create more trauma by holding on to things you don't need. I feel like in this world, we got enough trauma as is. I think everybody has something that they've dealt with that has been been a very serious thing to deal with. I don't want to go too detailed to that, but I'm sure people have things that they look at and and they're like how do i how do i overcome this now i know that there's some people that have made conscious steps to get better whether that's going to therapy or going to church or you know being around people that can help them be accountable and hold themselves up um and i know that there's others that will turn and run away because they feel like they don't have anybody or they don't know how to let go or they are still in darkness but what I will, would tell you is that there is light inside of you, regardless of how dark you think your spot may be. You still have light. And whether it's a very dim light or whether it's a very bright light, wherever you see that light, you got to go toward that. That's that's what we're waiting for you to become, the light in this world. And maybe your story is a testimony for somebody else who doesn't know how to break free, but you did. Maybe you're the the key to someone's life to change it for the better. Maybe you are the deciding factor that gives a person hope when they were willing to end it all. But until you until you face yourself and say, okay, this is what I need to do, then we'll always be in that same starting position. And just because you're there at the starting position like, you actually have to run the race. You can't just show up, be there, and then just say, oh, well, I was there. What did you do? How did you manage? How did you get through? What were some of the things you faced? How how were you able to say, okay, this is where I'm at, and I recognize it, and this is where I'm trying to go, and now I'm trying to be better? I think the best example of that for me was, was um, watching my mom, who I remember when we were younger um, – I mean, we knew who God was. We went to church when, you know, we did the Christmas, the Easter's and stuff like that. I don't vividly remember going as like a family for real. I just remember there were like bits and pieces of times where we went. Like <laughs> I remember one time there was a church service. It was like eight, nine o'clock at night, right? Um, for Christmas. I remember we were all like dressed up and I didn't want to go. And so the baby pictures or the pictures when I was younger, hilarious because I'm sitting there with a whole attitude. But they made me go anyway, which is what it is. Um, so that's like a vivid one I remember. But then I remember shortly, well, probably a year or two after my parents got divorced on Sundays, I remember like I would just sleep. And my mom would be coming back home at like 12, 45, 1 o'clock. I'm like, where you been? She's like, I went to church. I was like, oh, OK. And then she started going, she went for probably about two months on her own. And then she was like, all right, 
everybody's going next week. So then her and my sister went, or me and my sister went. And then it was like just kind of sitting there, not necessarily knowing what was going on, but watching my mother, who I didn't know then, but I know now was dealing with that trauma of divorce. Like life changed for her. And she was trying to figure out exactly like who she was as a person. And she was drawn to God. And then she realized that she wanted to pull us in. And so we started off at one church and then we ended up going to another church just because her growth and her, and her spirit. And then double tried to throw a wrench in that because that church turned out to be a little different than what we expected in the sense of like leadership, but it led her to her current church, which if you ain't Cleveland, it's the word church, great church to be. Um, and she's been rocking with him ever since. And what makes it even better is just that it is still something inside of my sister and myself to say, okay, we need to start being active in what we do. I know my sister is is being active in singing and, and praising and worshiping. And my other sister, she was already doing it. So she kind of encouraged my, my sister to be there. So now they're both in that in that realm. I know for myself that um, I, I am a part of a church, but I know I need to continue to do more. And that is that getting rid of that old mindset of like, ah, Sunday, I, I ain't got to go. But I know that I got to put myself in a position to stand up and go to make sure that my family is there, to make sure that my kids are going. You know, my son has to go. I think that's a blessing. Would I have been able to do all that? I, I say all that to say this. Would I have been able to do all of these things if I was still living in that old habit of like, eh, it is what it is. I'll go whenever I feel like it. I don't think we have time to do that anymore. I don't think that we're in really the the phase of life to where we can sit there and go, eh, we'll see what it is. I encourage you to get into get into formation today. Like if you know that spirituality is lacking, I encourage you to pick up your word and read something and just make it a daily habit every single day. I encourage you that if you know that there is loose ends that you got to tie up, if there's people you got to forgive or if you got to forgive yourself, like, and even if you don't know like all of it, I, cause I was even in that position. Here's what I did. I just prayed to God and I said, dear Lord, if there are people that are looking for forgiveness from me, I forgive them. But if there are also people that I need forgiveness from, Lord, I ask for that. I don't know everybody or everybody's feelings. I don't know. But what I do know is, is that I believe in you. I'm a better person because of it. And I ask, Lord, that if I need to be, if I need to ask for forgiveness, I'm asking you, Lord, to speak to those people and whether they see me or not to forgive me. And in the same breath, if there's people in the, in the same realm, I want to be able to forgive them. I want to be able to be forgiven, and I also want to be able to forgive. Because I want to be able to show my kids, and I want to be able to show my family that, although I'm not a perfect man, I am a man that wants to live by what God says. And I want to make sure that I do it the right way. If I stick with how I was back then, before all this stuff has happened, then I'm just the shell of who I say I want to be. I don't want to be a shell of anything. <laughs> like I don't want it. I don't want the potential of it. I want to be it. And so you have to look into your mind and figure out what are those things that you don't need. Time to do some spring cleaning on your life. It's time to start getting rid of things that you don't need anymore. It's time to let go of bad habits. It's time to let go of bad burdens. It's time to let go of negative thoughts, negative actions, negative decisions. It's time to start walking on the straight and narrow. It's time to look at your life and analyze where you're headed. Are you, are you hurting yourself or helping yourself? Are you glorifying God or are you pleasing man? Like those are the things you have to look at. And if you decide that what you're doing isn't right and you want to get on the right path, start the cleaning process now. One of the best ways you could do that is, hey, dear Lord, cleanse me. Make me whole again. 
I want to I want to be made new. And the most beautiful part about this whole thing is that if you go back to the beginning, the beginning, the beginning, if you go into Genesis and you look at how God created Adam and Eve, how God built us up from the dust and the dirt and he created Adam, but he made him in his likeness and his image. And then he took the rib from Adam and then he created Eve. And now they have partner. They, they, they were partners. You see what I'm saying? When he created them, he also had all of us in mind. So if we're all made in his image and we're all made for the goodness of him, then we also have to recognize that his ultimate sacrifice of dying for us, holding all those sins, all those burdens, all those things that we hold on to, he's already washed them away. If he's already forgiven you, how come you can't forgive yourself? If he's already paid the price for it, why are you still trying to pay extra? This is the true definition of let go and let God. I am working on it too. So don't think that I got it all figured out because I don't. But what I will tell you is each day I get, I'm going to try to do my best. And all I can ask is that you do the same. That's it. Nothing else. Just 100% effort of trying to be the best version of you. The best version of who you want to become. Clean, cleaning out the things that you don't need. Being purified by the spirit. Not holding on to the negative things that the world wants you to hold on to, but holding on to the promises that God has for you, plans for you to prosper, plans for you to grow, plans for you to have a great life and to have eternal life when we are no longer here on this earth. That's all I can ask you for. That's all I can ask you for is to try your best. I've been in that position. And sometimes I go back to that dark space of holding on to things that I don't need, of wishing that I could control things. And it scares me because <clears throat> it makes me feel like I'm less than or I'm not perfect or, oh, my God, like people are going to see who I was and, I, uh, and, and now I can't do this and do that. No, I, why can't I change? Why can't I be better? And honestly, if people are judging you based on who you were in the past and they can't see the newer version of you and you've moved forward and you've grown, it's not really up to you to make that decision. You are on the right path. They may have to do some extra work, but what I won't do, I'm not going to hate on them for how they feel about me. I'm just going to pray that they feel good about themselves because there may be some things that we don't know that they're fighting. Um, Shannon Sharp said it best. I might have said this before, but he said that you never judge a person by where they're standing because you don't know how far they've had to walk to get there. I don't know battles that you fought. I don't know situations that you've been in. I don't know what trauma you have or what you're holding on to. All I can do is pray for you and encourage you to get rid of the old things that are destroying who you are and chase after the new things that you know that are going to build you and help you to become the person you're supposed to be. And with everything that's happening in this world and all the things that are going on around us, if we're truly going to pursue greatness in a world full of chaos, then we have to be willing to let go of the chaotic and we have to be ready to step into the new. And as scary as that is, things that we can be assured, God knows our plans and he has great plans for us. And because he also knows that we are going to be walking this thing and we're not sure of everything that we're going to see, we can trust in him at all times and not lean on our own understanding. And if we acknowledge him in everything that we do, he will direct our path. And so I'm telling you to trust in the one that will direct you. If you're still stuck in that old, cleanse it out. And step into your new. And as scary as it may feel at the time, just know that it is the best breakthrough. Because then you will really see who you're truly meant to be. And I want that for you. And I hope you want it for yourself. So. I can speak for myself and maybe for a few others, but. Time to get to cleaning, huh? You nervous? Maybe. Scared about it? Probably. God got us? 100%. Absolutely. Go forth and be great. And as always, know that I believe in you.
and go believe in yourself, all right? It's the Overthinking Thoughts Pod. I'm Ed. We out. These thoughts have been my head. Things I never did. I took some meals, but I'm still here. I got these thoughts up in my head. I toss and turn about some things I never said. I got regrets about some things I never did. I took some risks and took some L's, but I'm still here. I'm still here. And I know. And I know. And I know.